We're now on our way to the Natchez City Cemetery in Natchez, Mississippi. Now here we are arriving at one of the oldest cemeteries in the state. Now this is not only one of the oldest, but it's also one of the most beautiful. This cemetery was established in 18 and 22 on a 10 acre track and this cemetery grew into a park notable for its variety of 19th century iron and marble work. One of the first stops is the most unusual grave in the cemetery, the grave of little Florence Irene Ford. This is the Washington Ford family plot. In 1871, when Florence was buried, this was a very expensive plot with all of the beautiful ironwork. Now, little 10-year-old Florence died of yellow fever, as a lot of people did. She was the daughter of Washington and Ellen Ford. Florence died on October the 30th, 1871. Her mother, Ellen, simply could not let her go. She had a glass window placed over the head of Florence's casket where she could see her daughter. She then had another grave dug at the head of Florence's grave with concrete steps leading down to the same level as Florence's grave was. She then had a glass window installed at the bottom of the steps where she could come and sit on the bottom step and look at her daughter whenever she wanted to. It was not until 1952 that the glass window looking into Florence's grave was plastered over to prevent vandalism. Then she placed Florence's favorite toys in her grave with her. This little baby angel has been sitting here watching Florence's grave almost 150 years. It's said that Florence was always scared of thunderstorms and would always run to her mother for comfort. So every time a storm come up, Helen would come and sit at the bottom steps and read to Florence so that she wouldn't be scared. This iron door would be closed over her to keep rain out. As you can see, this plot was for several family members, but only little Florence is buried here by herself. O oh, weep not, my parents, no longer repine, for in beauty transcendent your daughter doth shine. But dry your tears and prepare soon to come to join in the praise of the Father and Son. Washington Ford, Florence's daddy, disappeared shortly after her death. And after a while, Florence's mother Helen also disappeared, both leaving a little Florence by herself. On September the 18th, 1857, Rufus E. Case 
and his wife, Margaret, buried their seven-year-old daughter, Laurel Narcissa. She had died at their home in Wallenstein, Louisiana. One year later, on November the 29th, 1858, Rufus Case, Laurel's father, died at the age of 31. It was his request that he be buried beside his young daughter while sitting in his rocking chair and facing his home in Wallenstein, Louisiana. Mr. Case was entombed while sitting upright beside Laurel's grave. That is the reason for the three-tier structure. This is what they call the turning angel. It's been said that the angel was designed to appear to be looking from any direction. On March the 14th, 1908, the Natchez Drug Company, a five-story building located at Main and North Union Street. Now this building had been having problems with gas leaks. A plumber was called and it's believed that the plumber was a man by the name of Sam Burns. The only way a leak could be detected in those days was by using a lit candle. The explosion killed nine people, including Burns. It set fire to 18 houses, completely destroying 10 of them. The business district was completely shut down and martial law had to be declared for several days. The owner of the drug company, John Chambliss, here with his family, was so devastated that he never reopened his thriving business again. He bought this plot here at the Natchez City Cemetery to bury his five youngest employees. He commissioned a sculpture to create the turning angel at great cost. The explosion was one of the worst peacetime disasters ever occurred in Natchez. The five youngsters are Carrie O. Murray, age 22, Inez Netterville, age 17. Lizzie Worthy, the youngest at age 12. Ida White, age 19. Lula Booth, age 17. Now from the back side of the monument, it gives the full names of the victims. This tombstone simply reads, Louise the Unfortunate. Now there is no first name nor any date shown. No one really knows Louise's real story. But some say that she came to Natchez by steamboat, looking for her fiancé whom she had come to marry. Now if this is true, then her fiancé was either already gone or was already married. It is true that she searched the city over looking for him, both under the hill, the brothel district, and also the wealthy, more refined districts. Some thought that she was embarrassed to go back home after building up her fiancé so much. 
Others say that she simply didn't have the money to buy a ticket. Now, Louise worked at several respectable jobs to start with, such as a seamstress and housekeeper. She was a waitress in cafes located under the hill and eventually became a soil dove. No one knows who paid for her funeral, but for a lady without means, she was buried in one of the better cemeteries. It was thought that a plantation owner that had visited Louise from time to time might have been the one that paid for it. Others said that a doctor that had treated her through her working years might have. Even a preacher was mentioned, often paying for paupers' graves. However, Louise had no pauper's grave. It is believed that Louise died of tuberculosis.